Good morning, everyone, and welcome to DMA's 9-11 commemoration. My name is Jessica. My name is Sundas. Can we ask everyone to please stand and stay silent as our honor guard enters to the Pledge of Allegiance and sing our national anthem. Hold the colors. Thank you, Parth, Patek, Ada, and Koshik. Now Shawane and Janelle will lay the memorial wreath and lead us in a moment of silence. All over America today, people are commemorating when the first tower was hit at 8.46 on the morning of September 11th. Please join us as we respect their memories with the moment of silence. continued service to our nation's military, we would like, we would be honored to have you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing and join us for our national anthem.
After studying the events that took place 12 years ago today and visiting the site where the Twin Towers had been located before they were destroyed, students created a number of artistic projects that you can see around the room. Isha, Tania, and Michelle will tell you about their creations. For our Diversity Day class, we visited Ground Zero, and after visiting it, it inspired us. We realized how many lives were lost, and today we stand here to show you our interpretation of what happened. Tania, Michelle, and I created murals of the towers. The towers represent those who had fallen on that terrible day. The stars in the tower each represent three lives. There are 1,000 stars representing the roughly 3,000 lives that were lost. On September 11, 2001, several radical Islamic men hijacked four commercial airlines in an act of terrorism against the United States. Two planes destroyed both towers of the World Trade Center, and Americans watched in horror as another attacked the Pentagon and a fourth crashed in the Pennsylvania field. Almost 3,000 people lost their lives in the attacks. Due to the proximity to New York, many Bergen County residents were affected by the tragedy at the World Trade Center. Today, we remember the heroism displayed by so many people on this day and respect those whose lives were lost in the attack. Please join us in remembering with this video.
You see the paper links surrounding the room? Maria and Daniela will explain their significance. After learning about the attacks that happened on September 11, 2001, and the effects that they had on different people, and we decided to dedicate these links to the horrific event. These links represent the 3,000 people who died in 9-11. The links are white instead of the color of the American flag because not just Americans died. People from 90, from 90 other countries died on that day, and these links are a symbol of everyone being equal and united as one. White also represents innocence, and it is a memorial color. The eight balloons that you see here today, they should fit and symbolize the eight little kids who lost their lives on the airplanes during 9-11. The names of the children who died were three-year-old David from Los Angeles, California, four-year-old Juliana from Connecticut, Bernard Asia and Rodney from Washington, D.C., Christine from Massachusetts, and from Maryland, three-year-old Dana and her eight-year-old sister Zoe. These were the littlest victims, yet they were often greatly overlooked. We all have them now. Catalina and Vanessa would now like to tell you about the banner they created. On the banner you see here in front of the podium, we painted the sky blue because witnesses said that on September 11, 2001, it was in fact a beautiful day when the sky was blue and the sun was so bright. We hope that our banner helps people recognize that even though we endured this tragedy, we came out as, as stronger citizens of the United States. While most of us in this room have very big memories of 9-11, some of our faculty felt the pain and shock of this event and still remember it vividly. We would like to invite Ms. Liz from The Zone to share with us a snapshot of what she remembers most from that day. Ms. Liz? The images that you just saw on the screen are still conjure up very difficult feelings still to this day. I remember vividly what I felt like 12 years ago. I had just dropped my children off at school, they're, they're both your age, and I was sitting having a cup of coffee watching the news when the first plane hit. I thought to myself, what a terrible tragedy, some small plane, some pilot took a wrong turn, but then the other plane hit, and it was at that moment that I knew something very serious had happened. I was at first shocked, I was scared, I was scared about my kids. My husband worked in the city. I had a lot of friends that worked in the city. I didn't know what was to come. I couldn't believe that humanity had been brought to this level. With that, I rushed to the school like many of us parents did. Many of our faculty here have children. We rushed to our schools to get our children. And the complete horror that I saw in the school parents crying not knowing that their husbands were coming home. I had two friends that died that day. My children's fathers were killed in that attack. And out of that pain, as we sat and watched that evening, watching the terrible images that you saw in live time, people jumping from buildings, out of that came a resolve that we must do something, that we must be better. This community in Englewood and Bergen County, we banded together to help those people that were waiting to hear from their loved ones. To all the firemen and the first responders, we did whatever we could to send supplies over the bridge. It was very difficult to get over the bridge. It was a very painful time, but it was a time when we all came together. But please remember that this event, while it did bring us together and remind us who we are, a great deal of strife and divide happened after it. People were unkind to one another. People blamed certain ethnic groups, certain religions for what had happened. I implore all of you, as you move forward into your adult life, to be kind to one another, to learn more about your world, know what's going on in your community, know what's happening in the world. Today we have amazing things happening in Syria. Be aware, better yourselves so that you can better this world. Thank you.
Thank you, Ms. Liz. Many families have to deal with the heartbreak of losing a loved one. Brandon and Laura created a poem and PowerPoint that explores the pain and loss. Serena will play the piano to accompany them when they read us their poem. Remembrance of what could have been. The mother is standing looking for her lover, searching for her lover that she lost. My son is pondering, looking for his daddy. Where is he? Darkness is coming his way. The shadows are covering them with fear. The two buildings are clashing together. It's like hell on earth. Where to go? I see dark. I am blinded with horror. He wasn't going to come out. He's gone forever. Letting him go was the easy part. Knowing he is a part of the ashes was the hard part. Your child is going to grow up without a father. Who will his father figure be when he grows older? It's hard to know that I was with him just a day ago. We were eating dinner together, chatting about our future plans. It's been 12 years since her husband died. There hasn't been a day that she doesn't think about him. There isn't a day in my mind when I don't ask myself, why did this have to happen? Satterfield to share with us a snapshot of what she remembers mostly from that day. Hello. Um, while I was thinking about what I wanted to say today, a rush of memories came back. During 9-11, I was a junior at Rutgers University. And like many, I wake up to my alarm with the radio. But that morning I woke up to hear that New York had shut down the tunnels, the George Washington Bridge, and that a plane had flown into the World Trade Center. I looked at my roommate Julie and we ran to the living room. What we then saw shocked us. We couldn't believe what we were watching. It became very quickly apparent to us that we were under attack. Nobody knew how many planes. For those of you who don't know, Rutgers is one of the largest, if not the largest, university in New Jersey. And the school went into shutdown mode. Teachers or professors started running out of classes, screaming about the loved ones they had in the World Trade Center. Students started thinking about their parents. One of my friends, Justin, father, was lost that day. My professor, Dr. Stromberg, lost her son, who left behind a wife and a newborn baby. And that's when it was, became real. This was not TV. This was not a dream. This was something very real. And the more people we thought that we knew there, the scarier it became. And so the feelings we had that day were disbelief, shock, fear. And you just saw a quick clip of what we saw that day. 
But if you can imagine live TV, watching people's reactions, dealing with our own reactions. And I'm a person, I'm, I will say this, I'm not a crier. But there's a school nearby the World Trade Center. And when they showed those kids running and they were scared and they were crying, that's when it hit home for me. But out of the turmoil of that day, the part that was amazing to see, when I came home that weekend, my landmark that I know was close to Inglewood was, I used to pass the World Trade Center and I could see it from the turnpike. And what I saw that day was smoke. I went to New York because you felt, above all things, we were American. It had nothing to do with your race, your ethnicity, your language. We were all American during those days. And you wore your flag and you were proud to do whatever you could to help. If all you could do was to get a case of water, then that's what you did to help those first responders. Because we knew we were in this together. The terrorists didn't pick who they wanted to attack. They didn't care what age you were, where you were from. We were Americans and we were all victims. And so as you go forward, I want you to remember, despite anything, the one thing that unites us is that red, white, and blue. And we should be proud. And we should never forget because we don't ever want something like this to happen again. And so if you do anything today, please remember that everybody in this room is your fellow American. And you should do whatever you can to help one another. Because on that day, we were about helping each other the best we could. Thank you. Other students were also moved to record their emotions after visiting Ground Zero with the class. Here have been Nita and Atiyah to introduce the film that they created. This video was made in inspiration of the 9-11 Tribute Center, which left us speechless and in awe of the tragic events that took place. We hope to channel to you the emotions we felt about the center through this video.
retrieve the colors. While 9-11 can leave us feeling sad and even helpless, Fabiola Zapata wants to end our show by sharing her message of love and hope. Please give it up for Fab.
this time, I would certainly like to acknowledge Ms. Harrison and all the students involved in the presentation of this program. Um, let's give it up for them one more time. I shared with the last group that it took me until this summer to go to round zero. I just, it was too difficult for me. Like Ms. Corsini, there were people in my life that were lost that day. And what I found in going there was, along with all the remembrances and, and those kinds of things, looking up to see the Freedom Tower rising 1,776 feet. And the significance of that, of course, is Declaration of Independence, absolutely. And I think if nothing else, that is something that we can come away from this event with, with the resolve to rebuild, the resolve to move forward, the resolve to be proud of who we are. And that's all reflected in that rising from the ashes symbolically. And we do hope that you do the same in reflection today and in the years to come, because when your kids ask you that question, make sure that you can answer it, the significance of it, why it was important. I applaud you at this time. Thank you for being a very comfortable audience.